Greg Cook. Greg studied cooking in London, England, and the intricacies of chocolate at Calvo College in Belgium, and the Ecole de Cran Chocolate in France. Greg opened his Kitsilano shop, Chocolate Arts, in 1989. This past year, he moved and expanded his store and added a cafe a few blocks away. To this day, Chocolate Arts is devoted to creating unique chocolate products, emphasizing local and organically grown ingredients. At the shop, you'll find small batches of artisanal chocolates being created each day using the best raw chocolate from producers in Belgium and France. Please join me in welcoming Greg Cook. We opened first uh, in 1989, so we're actually, uh, we actually started in 1989. We opened our first store in 1992, so we're coming up to our 20th year in about another four days. Uh, so I'm hoping what Leslie said was true, that it will take us 20 years to be an overnight success. Chocolate has been a, a very interesting journey for me. I often will say that I didn't really choose chocolate. Chocolate chose me. So I was always very passionate about food. Um, grew up in the prairies where I don't really know where this passion for food came because growing up in the prairies in the 1960s, there was not what you'd call a very good quality <laughs> level of food there. Um, that being said, we ate tomatoes out of the garden cucumbers, did our own pickles, the family. So I grew up on those really foods that were very um, plain, but very sustenance. Started out cooking, and then I went into pastry because it was my entire idea that I wanted to be able to own a restaurant or a, a country inn where I could bake every bread, make every item that we would serve, all the pickles, all the, you know, the, the, that whole vision of the country inn. Um, and uh, essentially faked my way into a pastry shop where on the interview the gentleman asked me if I'd ever worked with fondant before and I said uh, no not really not a whole lot but I had no idea what fondant was <laughs> so I immediately ran to the library read up on fondant memorized the recipe and uh, that was sort of the start of my pastry career from that uh, it was went and progressed along there, and uh, the next logical step was we had a there was a uh, person who delivered fresh herbs to all of the restaurants around the town, a company called Glorious Garnish. They were the first people to serve salad mixes to all the all the companies or all the restaurants downtown. And the the gentleman one day said, "You know, I've got this field of mint. What should we do with it?" And uh, the chef at the time that I had said, well, we covered the chocolate. So being the pastry chef, they came to me, and that was actually the start of Chocolate Arts. Our first product actually was that we took fresh herbs and coated them in chocolate and tried to sell them. We, we discovered that tarragon and basil and mint didn't quite work so well. Uh, fresh mint ended up drying out like grass, and so it wasn't that pleasurable to eat. Um, through that, we met um, an individual new Robert Davidson, who was a First Nations artist, and that was when we got, he joined the, the company as a partner and we manufactured medallions of, of his chocolates. You know, I remember standing in the front of our store after five years and uh, standing there and going, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, but I don't know how I got here. So it was, I found something that I was very good at um, that obviously gave people pleasure and um, that's where we ended up. Uh, through all of this, this is inextricably, inextricably connected to my, uh, my wife at the time. We had decided we were getting married in February and planning on getting married far before we were gonna open the shop, so I just had my 20th anniversary. But what ended up happening was, due to leases and due to everything, we ended up getting married about a week before we opened our store 20 years ago. So it's always been inextricably connected in that, in that way. But the one thing that, that Leslie really said was uh, about passion. It's, you know, 20 years in, we've just spent a whole bunch more money and 
uh, committed to building the facility that actually saw that we could have 20 years ago, but, but was too scared to do. So we finally have that, we have enough space, and now we have the, the ability to do all the things that we've, we've always wanted to do. So that's, uh, that for me, on the days when I'm not fretting, is just a, a very wonderful thing. But it's always that, that drive. I like to take as many local products as possible, strengthen the flavor, or enhance the flavor of that product so that when you taste, um, so we will taste some chocolates later on, or you'll be leaving with some chocolates. We have a, a pumpkin chocolate, and these are a, an organic sugar pumpkin that are grown in the Hazelmere, Hazelmere Organic Farms. We take that pumpkin, we baby it, we roast it, we reduce it, we dehydrate it, we mix it all together so that we can strengthen the pumpkin so that it'll actually carry through the chocolate. So hopefully, when you bite into it, you immediately go, that's pumpkin. I'd always not like the fact that I would eat a chocolate and I'd go, I have a hard time figuring out what the flavor is. Having worked with chocolate for a long time, I know how difficult it is to capture the essence of all of those products that we're trying to do. Another chocolate that uh, is in there uh, today is an oatmeal stout chocolate, and we've used the stout from uh, R&D Brewery, so Rick and Barry, and so it's, uh, we tremble off to their brewery with 14 liter pails, and we take 14 liters of liquid and reduce it down to about 200 grams. That's the essence that we use to really strengthen the flavor. So that's um, that's how the flavor sort of carry through the whole uh, through the dark chocolate and everything like that. We often say in our to our team members that what we're trying to do is take the inconsistent and make it consistent. So. We've discovered that clientele, the one thing about being a manufacturer is we have people who come in because they remember from a long time ago the flavor of how something tasted. And they come in with that taste memory and want to have it again. And so that therefore we work really hard to be consistent year in, year out, but continue to evolve as we learn and as we grow. We learn how to get more um, flavor of everything. That's what sort of gets me out of bed most mornings. Um, the beauty is, is that we opened up, uh, we're serving coffee now, and that was just so that I wouldn't spend $4,000 a year getting coffee from everybody else. <laughs> so I can have unlimited uh, coffee because I've gotten quite, uh, quite addicted to it, and it's quite a, quite a wondrous thing. Um, the, uh, there's another chocolate in there we call an espresso stick, and that is made with uh, chocolate that we, or the, the coffee that we use from that, and the coffee that we use is from uh, Seattle called Herkimer, and there's a small roaster. And they, uh, while there's a number of places that make great coffee here, we just felt that we had a real affinity for those guys. There are a couple of dudes who just roast really good coffee and are really committed to fair trade coffee and all of that. And uh, I thank you. Thank you, Greg. So as you heard, on your way out tonight, you'll be receiving a chocolate treat from Chocolate Arts.